control. It's a primal urge, a desire as old as humanity itself. To bend the will of another, to shape their thoughts, to make them dance to a tune only you can hear. This is the dark heart of mind control. Throughout history, this ambition is manifested in whispers and screams, in subtle manipulations and brutal coercion. Today, it lurks in the shadows of our hyper-connected world, more insidious and pervasive than ever before. The human mind is a fortress, but even the strongest fortress can be breached. Our thoughts, beliefs, and actions are vulnerable to manipulation. This is not science fiction, it's the unsettling reality of our times. From the flickering screens in our homes, to the algorithms that track our every move, the potential for control is woven into the fabric of modern life. We are bombarded with messages, bombarded with images, bombarded with narratives that shape our perceptions of the world. The danger lies in our complacency. We dismiss the notion of mind control as the stuff of conspiracy theories, but the truth is far more nuanced, far more insidious. It's not about turning people into mindless automatons. It's about subtly influencing their thoughts, their desires, their choices. It's about shaping their reality. The year 1984 may have come and gone, but George Orwell's chilling vision of a totalitarian state where thought is controlled and dissent is crushed remains a stark warning. Big Brother, the omnipresent symbol of government surveillance, has transcended fiction to become a potent metaphor for the erosion of privacy and freedom in the digital age. We willingly surrender our personal information to tech giants and government agencies, often without a second thought. But Orwell's warning extends beyond government overreach. It speaks to the power of language, propaganda, and the manipulation of information to control the masses. The Ministry of Truth, tasked with rewriting history and distorting facts, serves as a chilling reminder of how easily truth can be manipulated to serve those in power. Today, we are bombarded with a constant stream of information from a multitude of sources. Social media, news outlets, and even our own social circles can become echo chambers, reinforcing our existing biases and making it difficult to discern fact from fiction. The internet, once hailed as a tool of liberation, has become a double-edged sword. While it has connected us in unprecedented ways, it has also created new avenues for manipulation and control. Social media platforms, with their sophisticated algorithms and targeted advertising, have become breeding grounds for misinformation, polarization, and the spread of extremist ideologies. Our digital footprints, meticulously tracked and analyzed, are used to create detailed profiles of our personalities, our preferences, and our vulnerabilities. These profiles are then exploited to influence our behavior, from the products we buy to the candidates we vote for. The line between persuasion and manipulation becomes increasingly blurred as we are bombarded with personalized content designed to exploit our deepest fears and desires. Propaganda, the systematic dissemination of information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, to promote a political cause or point of view, is perhaps the most insidious form of mind control. It preys on our emotions, our biases, and our desire to belong. Throughout history, propaganda has been used to justify wars, incite hatred, and maintain power. From the inflammatory rhetoric of Nazi Germany to the carefully crafted narratives of the Cold War, the power of propaganda to shape public opinion is undeniable. In the digital age, the tools of propaganda have become more sophisticated, more pervasive, and arguably more effective. Let's dive into the big question. Why do so many of us feel powerless? And how are just a few people able to control so much of the world? The issue of free speech has become a huge topic, especially with the rise of social media and digital platforms. Many argue that our freedom to express ourselves is under threat, with online platforms censoring content and people being deplatformed for their views. This isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a serious encroachment on free speech. But here's the thing. The real power comes when we realize we're stronger than we think. Those in control want us to believe they're invincible. But when we reclaim our power, their influence weakens. 
Think about it. What kind of mindset does it take to want to control billions of people? It's almost pathetic when you really think about it. Fear only holds power over us if we let it. When we stop fearing, we no longer need courage, we just do what needs to be done. One key to understanding all this is realizing how our perceptions are shaped. Our beliefs, opinions, and behaviors are heavily influenced by the information we receive. Whether it's from the news, social media, or personal experiences, the information we consume shapes how we see the world. And guess what? The more control someone has over the information, the more they control how we perceive reality. Here's where things get even more interesting. If you control the information, you control the perception. And if you can censor or suppress other viewpoints, you tighten that control. Platforms like Facebook, Google, and others have become gatekeepers of information. They decide what we see and what we don't. This is why people feel like their voices are being silenced, because in many cases they are. Let's not forget Silicon Valley, often referred to as the devil's playground. This small area in California houses tech giants that hold an enormous amount of power over the flow of information. Companies like Facebook and Google don't just connect us, they also collect massive amounts of data about us. This data is used to shape what we see online, influencing our opinions and ultimately, our actions. What's really happening is that power is being centralized in fewer and fewer hands. As technology advances, the potential for control grows even greater. Algorithms can now filter out information that doesn't fit a certain agenda and emphasize information that does. This kind of manipulation has been growing for years, and now we're starting to see the real impact. When the internet first emerged, it was sold to us as a platform for free speech and open communication. But over time, as companies like Google, Facebook, and YouTube have grown, they've begun to exercise more control over what's shared. Now, with near-monopolistic control, these platforms have started deciding what information we're allowed to see. This isn't just about political correctness or censorship, it's about how we've been deceived on a massive scale. The freedom of expression we thought we had is being eroded by a handful of powerful entities. The data they collect, the algorithms they control, and the decisions they make all contribute to shaping our reality. So what can we do? It starts with awareness. Once we understand how our perceptions are being manipulated, we can start to take back control. It's not easy, but recognizing the problem is the first step toward breaking free from the illusion. The fewer people who fall for the narrative, the harder it becomes for those in power to maintain control. We need to question what we're told, seek out alternative viewpoints and support platforms that genuinely promote free speech. That's how we reclaim our power and push back against those who want to control us. The rise of figures like Trump and similar movements in Europe stems from many people feeling silenced and ignored for too long. Political correctness and censorship have led to a situation where only certain views are allowed, stifling genuine debate and freedom of speech. A small group of tech giants, mainly in Silicon Valley, now control the flow of information globally, deciding what we see and hear. This concentration of power is unprecedented, and it threatens the very idea of free expression. The concept of conspiracy theory has been weaponized by powerful institutions to discredit those who question official narratives. Originally pushed by the CIA to suppress doubts about events like the Kennedy assassination, the term now serves to dismiss any dissenting voice, regardless of the evidence backing it. As society continues to enforce this narrow version of reality, anyone who questions it faces ridicule and exclusion. This is especially evident in debates around issues like gender, where only one viewpoint is tolerated. The idea that I am right, so you must be wrong, dominates, undermining open discussion and mutual respect. This isn't just about censorship, it's about control. Through education and media, a narrow perception of reality is drilled into us from a young age. This postage stamp view of the world becomes the standard by which everything is judged, and anyone stepping outside of it is considered disruptive. Moreover, powerful elites are pushing us towards a future where technology, like AI, could control human thought itself. They envision a world where human consciousness is merged with machines, effectively turning us into digital beings. This dystopian vision is part of a broader strategy to maintain control by those at the top, who understand that controlling perception means controlling reality. In conclusion, the fight for freedom of speech and open debate is more crucial than ever. As we face increasing pressure to conform, it's essential to resist and demand the right to think and speak freely. In today's complex financial and political landscape, power dynamics are tightly controlled by professionals who aim to maintain their grip on authority indefinitely. 
these elites understand that their ability to continue profiting from public resources is finite. Eventually, the public will begin to question where their money has gone. This is evident in cases like the disappearance of $21 trillion in taxpayer money, as investigated by experts like Mark Skidmore and Catherine Austin Fitz. The government's ability to obscure financial transactions is legally sanctioned under accounting practices like FASAB 56, which permits agencies to maintain two separate sets of books, one for internal use and one for public scrutiny. This practice essentially legalizes financial misrepresentation, making it nearly impossible for citizens to hold the government accountable for its spending. The financial crises of recent years, including the COVID-19 pandemic, can be viewed as massive wealth transfers, where the rich grow richer while the middle class shrinks. This trend is steering society towards a neo-feudal model where a small elite controls the majority of resources. Eventually, as people find themselves with diminishing financial security, they will demand answers and a fairer distribution of wealth. However, those in power have no intention of allowing this to happen. The Federal Reserve, especially the New York branch, is deeply intertwined with Wall Street, blurring the lines between government and financial institutions. The creation of the Federal Reserve itself was influenced by powerful banking families, and these connections continue to play a significant role in today's financial system. The book in question delves into the history and operations of these elites, exposing the networks that have operated for decades without accountability. It documents how power is passed down through generations, perpetuating the same patterns of financial manipulation and control. Americans, conditioned to accept top-down authority, often look for a political savior to solve their problems. However, true change will not come from electing a new leader, but from decentralizing power and building resilient, self-sufficient communities. The introduction of central bank digital currencies CBDCs, could further entrench the power of these elites, making it even more crucial for individuals to create parallel systems for food, energy, and financial security. The book also explores the role of influential families like the Rockefellers in shaping global economic landscapes, particularly in Latin America. Through initiatives like Adela and later Endeavor, these families have strategically financed select companies to dominate local economies, creating oligarchs loyal to their Western benefactors. This model of control extends beyond borders, with these elites exerting influence over both public and private sectors worldwide. The narrative culminates in a discussion about how platforms like Mercado Libre and Endeavor-backed company are becoming dominant forces in e-commerce and fintech across Latin America. This consolidation of power in key industries is happening at a time of engineered economic crises, pushing more people onto these platforms and further entrenching the control of global elites. In summary, the book provides a detailed examination of how a small group of powerful individuals and families have systematically manipulated global financial systems to maintain their dominance, leaving the rest of society to bear the brunt of their actions. In today's evolving financial landscape, there's a powerful network of influencers in the private sector, particularly in Latin America, who are shaping the future of business and finance in ways that aren't immediately visible. One key example is the co-founder of Mercado Libre, who also created Kazakh Ventures with another Endeavor entrepreneur. Together, they've funded thousands of startups. While this might seem like typical business growth, it's important to understand the influence that comes with funding. When a startup receives significant funding, it often becomes beholden to its investors. This gives those investors, who are often deeply connected to global financial networks, a lot of power in shaping the policies and direction of these companies. This isn't just about making money, it's about exerting influence over the private sector in ways that align with broader, often hidden, agendas. For those seeking control, having a strong grip on the private sector is just as crucial as controlling the public sector. This is where initiatives like Endeavor come in. Endeavor helps create a constellation of companies, especially in emerging markets like Latin America, where they can mold the economic landscape. While not all Endeavor entrepreneurs are problematic, the influence from the top, from figures like Reid Hoffman, can guide these companies in ways that benefit a select few at the expense of broader economic sovereignty. A key concern is the push towards covert dollarization in Latin America, which threatens the region's financial independence. This could have significant implications, especially when framed in the context of Bitcoin and digital currencies. 
While Bitcoin is often touted as a tool for financial freedom and banking the unbanked, the reality is more complicated. The same powerful entities that have kept the US dollar as the global reserve currency are now interested in maintaining their control, even as we move towards digital and decentralized systems. The narrative around digital currencies including central bank digital currencies CBDCs, and deposit tokens is part of this power play. While CBDCs are often seen as a way to enhance financial surveillance, deposit tokens offer a similar level of control but allow banks to continue their practice of fractional reserve banking. This means banks can still create money from deposits without needing to maintain a one-to-one -one reserve as they would with a CBDC. This is why some of the most powerful banks, including those with ties to the Federal Reserve, are advocating for alternatives to CBDCs. They want to retain their control over the financial system, and they're positioning these alternatives as the future of digital finance. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve's reluctance to issue a direct CBDC isn't about protecting financial freedom, it's about preserving the power of Wall Street banks. As we look at the larger picture, it's clear that there's a fight over the future of Bitcoin and other digital currencies. The involvement of major players like BlackRock in the Bitcoin space suggests that even Bitcoin, once seen as a tool for financial freedom, could be co-opted by the very institutions it was meant to disrupt. Financial privacy and autonomy are at stake, and it's crucial to be aware of the ongoing battle to control the future of money.